Greetings fellow planeswalkers, I'm James and welcome back to the Commander at Arms YouTube channel. This week on the YouTube channel, we are bringing you a brand new brew. So I got challenged by my friend Islane from the Possibility Storm to brew an Artisan deck. So that means that no card in the deck can be rare or mythic, they all have to be common or uncommon. So if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button, share, subscribe, and leave a comment in the comment section below. And with all that, let's get into this deck. I chose for my commander, Tatiova Benthic Druid. So this is a five drop Simic Commander 3-3 Legendary Merfolk Druid that has, when, says whenever a land ETBs under your control, you gain one life and draw a card. Quite strong. Well, some would say very strong. So we're going to start off here with the artifacts. Let's get into it. We have Arcane Signet. Two mana, mana rock, taps for any one color. In this case, blue or green. We have Soul Ring. We have Commander Sphere. This is a three drop that taps for one color. You can also sack it to draw a card. We have Talisman of Curiosity. This is a two drop that taps for colors or shocks you to add color to your mana, which is green or blue. After that, we have Isochron Scepter. Yes, I found a cheeky way of adding one of my favorite combos in the deck. Uh, after that, we'll also have a Lotus Petal. This is a zero drop artifact that you sack it and you add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Just trying to get Tatsu over out there a little bit earlier and start accruing some value over the table. With all that, let's get into the creature package here. This is the biggest part of the deck. So we have Acidic Slime. This is a five drop 2-2 two -two ooze with Death Touch. When it ETBs, you destroy target. Uh, artifact, enchantment, or land. This is a way that I was able to get some sort of, you know, creatures on the board. It's got Death Touch. It's going to... Stop my opponents from wanting to attack into me, as well as being removal on the board. We have Sakura Tribelder. This is a one and a green for a one-one human. Sorry, snake shaman that says you sack it, you go search your library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. We have Eternal Witness, three drop, two one, ETBs, get something back from the graveyard to the hand. After that, we have Gretchen Twitch Willow. This is baby Thrasios, as we like to call it. This is green and a blue for a zero four halfling druid, has an activated ability of two and simic to draw a card, then you may play a land card from your your hand onto the battlefield we have tireless provision on this is a three drop two three elf scout landfall when it etbs when it land etbs uh you get to create a food or a treasure token in this case i'm going to be probably making uh the food sorry the treasure token more than i'm going to be, going to be making the food token because i already gained love of tatsy over after that, we have Zimone Quandrix Prodigy. Again, this is just kind of like a Thrasios like effect. This is uh, Simic for a 1 2 human wizard that has two activated abilities. The first one is 1 and tap it. You may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. And then for 4 and tap it, you may draw a card. If you control 8 or more lands, you draw 2 cards instead. I expect them to be drawing a lot of cards with this deck. Uh, this one's going to kind of give the win con away a little bit, but this is Laboratory Maniac. We are self-milling ourselves, and you'll see why later on. This is two and a blue for a human wizard, 2-2, uh, two -two, that says if you would draw a card while your library is, has no cards in it, you win the game instead. Again, this is just an easy way of winning the game without having to attack my opponents. We have Farhaven Elf. This is three, a three mana one one elf druid. When ETBs, you search library for a land card, put it onto the battlefield tapped. It specifically says basic land card. You put it on the battlefield tapped. We have Wood Elves, same thing, but for a forest. Instead, it comes in untapped. We also have Beanstalk Giant. This is a two part card. So the first one is Fertile Footsteps. It is basically a cultivate. So it is two and a, uh, and a green you search a library for a basic land card put it about a field then shuffle your library and then for later on you exile it you can then play it from exile for seven mana it is a beanstalk giant for seven star star power so its power and toughness are equal to the uh, number of lands you control so this is early ramp and late game threat for me uh we have spore mound this is a five mana three three creature fungus with landfall whenever a land etbs under your control uh, create a 1-1 one, one green sapling creature token. I'm going to be getting a lot of value off of the lands and this just kind of gives me even more value. That way I can start bringing up a board presence. I have sack fodder. I have um, block fodder as well. I have attackers if I need it. Just a fantastic card in the deck, especially when I'm going to be versing a lot of maybe go wide strategies. Uh, we have ruin crab. This is one blue zero three crab landfall. When, it, when land ETBs under your control, each opponent mills three cards. We are on the self mill and also mill our opponents. So I want to stop my opponents from even doing anything. We are running 20 copies of persistent petitioners. So this is one and a blue for a one three human advisor with one activated ability. You can pay one and tap target. Uh, so you can pay one and tap. Target player puts the top card of their library into their graveyard. So they essentially mill one. But 
Sorry, for the second uh, activated ability, you can tap four untapped advisors you control. Target player puts the top 12 cards of their library into their graveyard, and a deck may have any number of cards named Persistent Petitioners. So I'm going to be either using these to mill myself or mill my opponents. Uh, we have Peregrine Drake, five mana, two, three flying ETBs, untapped five lands, just keeps me, you know, letting me keep going, essentially. Uh, we have Reclamation Sage. This is the same as Acidic Slime, but only hits target artifact or enchantment. It is a three mana, two, three elf, sh uh, elf shaman. After that, we have Sakura Tribe Scout. This is a one mana, one, one snake scout shaman that has an activated ability of tap. You may put a land card from your hand into play. We have a couple of these effects. We also have Hedron Crab. This is the original, he this is the original Mill Crab. Uh, one mana, zero, two crab that says landfall. Whenever a land ETB is under your control, target player puts the top three cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. We have Lanawa Scout. This is one on a green for a 0-3 Elf Scout with the same ability as Sakura Tribe Scout. It lets you tap it to put a land onto the battlefield. And that is all of our creatures. So let's get on to the next part here. We're going to talk about enchantments. We have two enchantments in the deck because we're not... I couldn't find anything that was really exciting to play that wasn't inherently like busted or broken. I guess there was four from favor that I could have played maybe. Uh, but Druid Class is a two mana enchantment that has three different levels. The first one is whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. If you get this to level three, which is for three mana, you can play an additional land per turn. And then for five mana, when this class becomes level three, target land you control becomes a creature with haste. And this creature's power and toughness are equal to the number of lands you control. It's still land. Another way of just getting a really good beat up, I'm going to have so much mana. So having finding like little mana sinks wherever I could was a perfect way for this deck to kind of go off. Now, because we're playing Persistent Petitioners, another great card for this deck was Quest for Renewal. This is one and a green for an enchantment. This is whenever a creature you control becomes tapped, you may put a quest counter on Quest for Renewal. As long as there are four or more quest counters on Quest for Renewal, untap all creatures you control during each other, each other player's untap step. So it just so happens that the activated ability on Persistent Petitioners is four um, advisors. This automatically makes your quest of renewal go online. So you tap them, you mill yourself, or you mill somebody else. You then get to untap and do it again. So you're gonna be milling 12 cards every turn. And that's not even on your turn. That's every single turn of the table. So before, if someone like tutors for something to the top of the library or whatever, you just tap your petitioners and all of a sudden it's in the bin. Seems pretty good to me. All right, after that, we're going to go into the instant package here. So this is all about like removal and counter spells and stuff. So we have reality shift here. It is one and a blue for an instant that says exile target creature. It's control and manifest the top card of their library, which means they put the top card of their library onto the battlefield face down. It becomes a 2-2 creature and they can flip it face up for its mana cost. If it has a mana cost, if it's a land, it just stays as a 2-2, which isn't too bad. Uh, we have Beast Within. This is a three mana removal for a target permanent. Its controller creates a 3-3 three, three green beast creature token. We have Arcane Denial. It's one and a blue for an instant. A counter target spell. Uh, counter target spell. Its controller may draw up to two cards at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. And you may draw at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. Just to kind of, you know, it's a cantripping uh, Arcane Denial. It says you're not going to cast that spell, but you get to draw two, two cards instead. We have a brand new counter spell from Crimson Vow. This is Wash Away. It is a one mana instant with Cleave. If you pay three mana, you can just regard, disregard whatever's in the square brackets. So uh, for one mana, it says counter target spell that wasn't cast from its owner's hand. And for three mana, you just get to target, you get to counter target spell. Kind of fun, kind of janky. Really wanted to play it in a deck since I saw it. This I thought was the best place to play it. After that, we have counter spell, two blue mana, counter target spell. We have Chorus and Grip. This is the same as um, Beast Within, but it is for artifact or enchantment. Also has split second, so it can't be responded to with anything. Can't be really countered. Uh, we have Pongify. This is one blue. Destroy target creature. It can't be regenerated. Its controller creates a 3-3 green 8 creature token. We have Ghostly Flicker. This is 3 mana instant. You exile two, tar two target artifact creatures and all lands you control, then return to the battlefield under your control. Yes. This is another way that I got infinite mana in this deck in Uncommons. So Eternal Witness, Ghostly Flicker, and Peregrine Drake creates you infinite mana. Excellent. And with having other things on the on the in the deck that wants to untap and tap, you can you can kind of see where the shenan shenanigans are going. I want to ramp. I want to draw. I want to find a combo piece. Yes, I found out a way to make an artisan EDH deck. 
with combos in it because that's the kind of player that I am. We have Harrow. This is two and a green for an instant that says, as an additional cost to cast a spell, you sacrifice a land. You may search your library for up to two basic land cards, put them onto the battlefield, then shuffle. We have Dramatic Reversal. This just goes with the Isaac on Scepter. It untaps all non-land permanents you control, which is going to untap your Mana Rock. But more importantly, it's also going to untap your Persistent, persistent Petitioners. Try to say that 10 times fast. It's kind of hard. We have Growth Spiral. This is a two mana instant. This is draw a card. You may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. We have Nature's Claim. It is a removal spell. One mana, uh, one green mana for an instant. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. It's control against four life. After that, we have Deprive. This is a two mana counter spell, but as an additional cost to cast it, you return a land to, uh, you return a land you control to its owner's hand. So again, fantastic two mana. Just, you know, tap two cast it as an additional cost just bounce one of those lands back to your hand you get to then play it again if you have druid class on level two or if you haven't played a land for this turn do it in uh play it again get another landfall draw a card off tatty over it's just a fantastic counter spell for 59 cents we have sprouting vines is our last instant here it is a three mana search your library for a basic land card reveal that card put it into your hand then shuffle and it has storm this is cultivate but only to the hand and has storm. So you can just get as many lands out of your deck as you want. And then when you play lands, you're only drawing straight gas because you've already brought all of your lands out of your library and into your hand. We would normally go into the mana base here, but I'm not going to because mana base is a very subjective and this one's kind of meh, it's all right. I mean, it's a it's a artisan EDH deck. Hasn't got anything fantastic and it. it's got a couple of duels in it and a couple of other stuff. Uh, Mystic Sanctuary is one to kind of talk about here. It kind of is going to put an instant or sorcery card back on top of my library, which would could get me another uh, ramp spell if I really wanted to. All right, lastly, we're going to go into the sorcery packet here and we have Distant Melody as our first sorcery. It is a four mana sorcery. It says choose a creature type, draw a card for each permanent you control of that type. You're going to be choosing either humans or advisors. So you can just draw a butt ton of cards. Uh, after that, we have Explore. This is one and a green for a sorcery. You may play an additional land this turn and you also get to draw a card. We have Cultivate, three mana ramp spell. Search your library for two basic land cards. Put one on the battlefield and one into your hand. We have Solve the Equation. This is a three mana uh, tutor. that lets you search your library for an instant or a sorcery card. Reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle. We have Fabricate. It is a tutor only for an artifact card. You put it into your hand, then shuffle. We have Kodama's Reach. This is a three mana. Essentially, it's the same as Cultivate. You search your library for two basic land cards. Put one on the battlefield uh, tapped and the other one to your hand. And with all that said and done, this is the deck that I'm going to be playing on the Possibility Storms stream on the 12th of March. So we're going to be playing some Eyes and Commander over there. I'm super excited to play this deck against Islane and everyone else we've got set up for the pod. So if you want to check that out, uh, head over to their Twitch page. I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, if you want to see this deck get, you know, either absolutely insane with value or if you want to see me lose because that happens as well. Uh, if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, uh, share it with your friends, leave a comment and ring the bell as well. Uh, if you want to talk to us about any of these cards or anything, you can do it on Twitter, which is CMDR at arms. If you want to pick up any of these cards, do it through our TCG affiliate link. That is tcgplayer.com slash commander at arms. And most importantly, if you want to support the show directly, you can do it on Patreon at patreon.com slash commander at arms. All patrons get access to the Discord server and certain patrons also get the chance to play Magic with Paul and I on our gameplay streams over on twitch.tv slash commander at arms, which is commander at arms to the battlefield that we upload here on YouTube every single Mondays. So go and check that out as well. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So with all that, I'm James and this has been a new commander at arms deck tech. Peace. See ya.